It's time to join uh, our legal analyst, uh, Joe DeGeneva, on the phone line to see what's going on with so many things that have to do with the law. He's always uh, one of our favorite guests. Hello, Joe. How are you this morning? It's great, Brian. All right. So I, I'm noticing, I know that I always start with this, but it, uh, I, it's a story that I just I think is so important that we just can't let it drop and we need to stay on it. There have been seems to have some le- developments in the Benghazi story of late, and there's a big uh, hearing scheduled for next Monday uh, on, uh, on Capitol Hill where we're actually going to hear from some of the C- – well, I guess they're not going to hear from them publicly, but behind closed doors we're going to hear from some of these CIA operatives. As you look at the, at the land, having you know, represented some of these people, uh, what do you see? Well, Mike Rogers, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, is holding a closed hearing next week of uh, agency personnel, CIA people and contractors who were on the ground. These people have been withheld from him and other members of Congress, and it was only under the threat of subpoenas that they were produced. These people have already given testimony to the FBI, to the State Department, to the Accountability Review Board, uh, and they've also written books, and yet they weren't going to be allowed to testify to Congress. This is so disgraceful. What's really disgraceful is it's taken Congress this long to threaten subpoenas. But they'll be up there next week, and presumably we'll learn something about what's testified behind closed doors. The big development, however, was this weekend when Lindsey Graham, the senator from South Carolina, threatened to hold up all... Obama nominees until he gets access to the people on the ground. This is a fantastic move by Lindsey Graham. Uh, He's been one of the truly stalwart people in sticking up for the people who died and for the families who remain uh, with no information except lies from this administration. Uh, So I assume this is being done behind closed doors because they want to protect the identity of these people who were operatives, correct? Uh, maybe that or maybe some classified information, but certainly there ought to be a way to, to, to get rid of any classified information and have Chairman Rogers at least, at least give some explanation as to what they testified to. I'll tell you how scared the administration is, by the way, yeah. apropos of this. Uh, they, they, they've started to try and trash the guy who was on 60 Minutes last week, the, yeah. uh, the former British Marine, and they've been lying about what he allegedly initially told them. But you know what's really interesting? He says, uh, just release the 302 form of my interview with the FBI, and you'll see that I told exactly what I told 60 Minutes. And you know what? The State Department and the Justice Department will not release the Uh FBI interview. So this is the same tactic. Try to smear and ruin people who are telling the truth about Benghazi. And then prevent him from actually proving what he said is the truth. Right, yeah. Exactly. Hey, Joe DeGeneva, tomorrow is the big election day over across the river in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and we've been tracking all of this money that's coming in. A lot of the focus has been, of course, on the McAuliffe campaign. you got Bloomberg's anti-gun money coming in. you got a lot of -of out-of-state union money coming in. Say goodbye to that right-to-work status for Virginia. But I know you have paid attention to this uh, race for delegate. Barbara Comstock, Republican delegate. Uh, she's running for re-election. And boy, there is a whole lot of outside money from Planned Parenthood and George Soros groups coming in and smearing her. What is that all about? Well, yeah, Michael Bloomberg. Yeah, Barbara Comstock, Republican, 34th District, fantastic delegate, been one of the most productive members of the uh, House of Delegates. She's being targeted by Michael Bloomberg, George Soros, MoveOn.org, all these leftist groups pouring money into her campaign, and what's interesting is the person who's running against her, the Democrat, is a woman named Kathleen Murphy, who can only be described as a scoff law. She's failed to pay her property taxes in Fairfax County five times between 2005 and 2012. And listen to this. Remember Abscam? Remember John Murphy? The, oh, my uh, gosh. Way back to that her thing. ex-husband. Uh. She was married to him during Abscam. She owns a house in Staten Island. And in 2010 and 2011, she failed to pay the property taxes in which the ex-felon lives in Staten Island. Boy, talk about a homebody. I mean, and not uh. only that, Kathleen Murphy, the Democrat running against Barbara Comstock, says she wants every doctor in northern Virginia to be forced to take Medicaid patients whether they want to or not. Wow. This is the future of Obamacare. I mean, this woman, Kathleen Murphy, not only is a scoff law, she's a nut. But you see all this money being poured into this campaign from outside sources. I mean, is this, is this sort of what we have to deal with now in the, uh, under, under Citizens United? Is that a good thing in the long run? Because it's sort of working against a Republican in this as case. As long as it's reported, as long as we know who's pouring in the money, I'm all for it. Yeah, and, and you I wonder think. if the people from Fairfax County are happy with their election being so influenced by the and likes it, of it, Michael Bloomberg. Exactly. Exactly, Larry. And if they don't like it, they should vote for Barbara Comstock because Barbara is not only an effective legislator, she's honest, she's trustworthy, she's done a phenomenal job for Northern Virginia. But now the Democratic machine, 
you know, this is this is Terry McAuliffe's idea to bring in the dirty money from New York and California in an election in McLean in the 34th district. This is all McAuliffe's idea. You know, uh, a D.C. federal appeals court on Friday uh, sort of struck down a mandate that the new health care law that would require two Catholic brothers from Ohio to ensure birth control for their employees because it violated uh, the two Catholic brothers' religious freedoms. Right. There have been a number of sort of rulings like this. Uh, that's a real victory for some folks. Oh, this is, this is phenomenal. It's very interesting. The, the decision was written by Janice Rogers Brown. Hmm. She was the judge who um, was violently opposed by the Democrats in the Senate during George W. Bush's uh, administration. She's an African-American woman. She's a conservative. And she wrote uh, a really stunning and very, very well-written opinion about why this violated the First Amendment rights of these uh, business owners and that it, it presented with them what she, she called an immoral quandary, which was either obey a law and violate their fundamental First Amendment religious freedoms uh, or, or lose or, or pay huge fines. So it's, go it's all going to the Supreme Court. Uh, th these these cases, there are about seven or eight of them making yeah. them uh, their ways up through the circuits. Uh, this is just one of them, but it was a particularly well written and well reasoned opinion. How do you expect that the Supremes are going to handle this? Will they bundle them or just pick one? I think what they'll do is they'll probably grant cert in two or three cases. They'll hear them all at the same time, and they always uh, rule in individual cases. They'll probably rule in two. Uh, depending upon, they'll they'll try to find cases that have similar issues and then put those together. They're, they'll hear argument together all in this probably the same day or two, but then they will issue separate opinions in those cases. And I believe they're going to strike down these provisions of Obamacare as it also self-immolates due to lack of implementation. Yeah. Hey, uh, Joe DeGeneva, can I just ask, I know you listen to the show on a regular basis. You've probably heard of us course. mentioning Attorney General Doug Gansler in Maryland. Yeah. We, we've mentioned him now and again on the show over yeah, the last a week. A few times, right. In fact, in just a moment, we've got an update on the latest with Doug Gansler. But I just wonder, from your position as a former uh, a, a attorney for uh, the district, uh, I, I, what is his responsibility legally? I mean, he, is he's the Attorney General of Maryland. Maryland, as soon as he crosses state lines in Delaware, does that mean he has no legal responsibility to what was going on at that party? Well, he has legal responsibility if he is a parent of one of the people there, uh, regardless mm. of that. And not only that, he's a visitor in the state of Delaware. And if, he is, if, if he's an adult and he's at a party where he sees laws being violated, he has an absolute duty to report that. Uh, that that's not a maybe. That's not an if. It has nothing to do with whether he's the attorney general or not. He's on duty all the time as a citizen. As we all are. Yeah. Now, in, in, in our case, if we choose not to report something, there's no consequence. But we might have consequences if someone did the same thing with us and took a photo of us and put it on YouTube yeah. or Facebook. <laughs> there and that's might be. the problem. All right. Thanks so much, Joe. And uh, that does lead us seamlessly into our Doug Gansler update oh, that's right. that's in right. just a moment. Thanks, Joe DeGeneres. Bye, guys.